Hi, I'm Matthew Clifton. I'm the lead developer on Montague's Mount, and you're watching Eurogamer. As the salty water withdraws from my eyes, my focus pulls in upon my feathered friends watching me from above. I'm guessing overboard. Yes, that is what must have befallen me. I, I must have somehow been washed overboard. What's up gamers, Ian from Eurogamer, back again with another exclusive interview about another awesome indie game, taken from the show floor at this year's Resd Expo. Contrary to popular belief, Montague's Mount isn't an expert level sex manoeuvre. It is in fact a first person psychological roller coaster ride through isolation, desolation and one man's tortured mind. Here's Matthew Clifton, the game's lead developer, to tell us more about this haunting game. Montague's Mount is a new uh, title coming, uh, PC, uh, Mac and Linux. Um, it's an exploration type puzzle uh, game. Um, you wake up on this uh, deserted island, you don't know where you are or how you, uh, how you got there. And over the course of the game it basically transpires that you find out this sort of big pivotal, sort of, I would say like a bad nasty instance that's happened. And the whole game is sort of uh, pivotal on this point. And uh, like I say, throughout the game it all transpires and it all comes out and uh, you finally work out the history and the secret of Montague's Man. It's, uh, it's a more relaxed pace of game, it's not, you know, your, your, your guns and your... Even though there is like a horror element to it, like, like, like I said, the backstory, it's not your in-the-face blood, guts and gore, it's, uh, it's more of a sort of a psychological thriller. With the more relaxed approach over the normal guns blazing horror games and an adult themed storyline, I take it that Montague's Mount will be full of atmosphere building, exploration and challenging puzzles. Yeah, there's plenty to see and uh, do and there's going to be some secret areas that you can explore and find and uh, plenty of puzzles to do, uh, thought provoking puzzles, not your normal sort of uh, just go there and do this and walk back there, there's going to, you know, you are going to need to know some things, but we're going to put uh, items in the game to help players with these so they ain't got to run off to the library necessarily and <laughs> research naval history or something you know that you know the things are going to be there to uh, give everyone what they need so without spoilers matthew could you tell us a little bit about the character we'll be playing as and how he's come to be wrapped up in the mystery of montague's mount he's almost based on myself it's, it's not autobiographical in the sense like it is me but like i moved to ireland the game is set in ireland like an island an irish island off ireland and I moved there approximately seven years ago, and uh, it's the, the, the environment is the same as what I'm used to, and it rains every day like it does. And um, he, he is me basically, but I wouldn't like to say I don't do what he did, if you know what I mean. But uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty much me. So kind of uh, fish out of water. Yeah, it's, it's hard. It was like he uh, his backstory is he's like um, an author, so he moved there to sort of get some make his new novel basically and uh, it's hard to fit in then to the new surroundings and the new environment and new way of life like it was for me when I moved to Ireland so uh, yeah and then it all sort of spirals out of control I would say without giving too much too much away much has obviously happened here a truly forgotten part of the world all these possessions that lay strewn around me are windows to someone's existence or are they in fact my own memories, trapped within my mind, forgotten about, locked deep within its grey interior? I feel like someone is watching me from within the empty shells of buildings that were once so full of life. Do I believe in God? The story is driven along by poetic narration from the main character. Can you tell us a little bit about how that will affect the atmosphere? Well, we had some great, we had some great time in the studio doing the voiceovers, and, and you could tell, like towards the end, the guy who was doing the voices, Derek Riddle, he, he was like emotionally drained. So it, it is quite shocking, like when it comes, when it comes. Out. If it affected the voice actor that much, how are you hoping the player will feel at the end of their journey? Are you aiming to have them emotionally drained as well? It is a, it is a bit of a roller coaster ride. It is so they may well be. <laughs> you know, it's not your yeah, all happy, all happy go lucky. So yes, they are gonna. It's gonna be an experience. It's gonna be an experience.
With only two months of development left, Montague's mount should be ready to play very soon, and at the moment the game is up on Steam Greenlight, waiting to be greenlit. So if you're in the mood for the immersive experience of a Dear Esther-like game, but with something to actually do in the form of intelligent puzzle solving and exploration, head on over to Steam Greenlight now and give the game a vote. I've included the link in the video description so there's no excuse not to do it. Thanks for watching peeps and don't forget to subscribe by clicking on the on-screen annotation if you want to fill your face holes with more exclusive interviews, interactive live streams and early previews on everything cool in gaming land. Nice. Oh, looks like the morning after a party at my house. They've obviously had too many Jaeger bombs, the lightweights. Weak.